This video shows the process for parts of several of the artworks featured in my Oranes or Winged Ones coloring book. You may have come here from the coloring book, or from the Amazon listing, or found this video some other way. Either way, this is a record of some of the artworks I worked on for that. It's partially a proof that I did make these artworks by hand. Some of the artworks are from artworks I'd done years ago, or that I didn't record the process of. Some, like these ones, are made in Procreate entirely, and you can see the process by which I modify and work things out. Others have only had backgrounds added to update them, but I tended to go over a lot of the line art again, even for older artworks, and I added a thicker outline around to add more separation from the background. Some of the artworks featured in the coloring book won't really have a background, will have a more natural background, and many have a more Art Nouveau inspired background. I had to edit down this video a lot so it wasn't too long because it takes a long time with my not very good internet to upload videos and because I didn't want this video to be too long. So a lot of stuff actually got cut and it's been sped up quite a bit. I used reference with VizRef off screen and I also looked sometimes even at old toys that I have of animals that are fairly accurate to help me. I used sketching and different layers in Procreate. I used certain brushes for these artworks that I think are the best for inking, and I use my sketching brush that I have in order to do the main painting and lay down for the sketching for this. The line art and the sketching are done on separate layers. Typically the background is done in several layers on its own. In this case I did a line art based on a painting. The painting is my Sylvan Eagle I painted before when I was working on the Great Tree Book project. I photographed it and did a trace over. It's my own artwork that I'm using the photographs of to trace over. So for example, this sketch of the curvy woman base with the bow was done traditionally just on printer paper with a pencil. Then I photographed it and in Procreate on a layer above, I was able to start doing the line art. I worked out things in layers. As you can see, I used the sketching brush just to work out the wings. I done the wings on a layer underneath the main body. I did her hair on its own layer then I did the clothing on a layer above the body base. I also erased that see-through part of the body that saw the bow. Underneath all that, I start working out the background. While working in Procreate on these Art Nouveau inspired type backgrounds or styled backgrounds, I use the symmetry feature. The symmetry feature under drawing assist is really useful to duplicate things on both sides. I turn drawing assist on and off when using that in order to sometimes make things exactly duplicated, but other times to add asymmetry in. I went back over an older line art for this type of drake in order to get a better version of the line art. Even when I was reusing older lines and older drawings, sometimes I had to re-ink things. The original was actually done using the sketch brush and didn't have clean enough line art in my opinion, so I basically completely re-inked it again, although I traced over my own older art. I think I actually have the artwork for that drake in an older video. In this case, I'm, I went over previously from a photograph of an old Inktober art I did. This enchanting art, which has a celestial of some description, enchanting a magic spear. I'm working things out by correcting things from the original line art, things I didn't like as much, and I'm also adding in an entire background. A lot of the art featured here focuses a little more on the background because, as I said, I'm using older line arts. Here I'm using a painting I did. A very realistic fairy frog I painted a while ago, and I decided to do a line art over it. I thought it was really adorable and fit the winged theme, so I wanted to use it and add in a nice Art Nouveau inspired background. As you can see, there's a lot of asymmetry in this particular background. bell if you're really enjoying my content. I know I featured the initial design of this line art from Procreate and a watercolor painting of it in the video listed in the title above, 
However, that video never got posted. I think I have a memory of it failing to upload correctly and I kind of gave up on it, but it's in my backlog of videos that still need to be posted, so maybe I'll post it someday. For variety's sake, I needed to do a variety of different people with wings, and in this case I knew I needed to do more men in particular. As you can see, I really had a hard time actually figuring out what I was doing for this picture. This one may have taken me the longest time of any picture in the entire coloring book. As I did the entire thing in Procreate, I decided to share the whole thing here, including all the mistakes and erasures. I did have to speed it up quite a lot though because it was taking up so much time. I had to keep changing the sizes and proportions even once I figured out the positioning. I looked at reference of ancient Egyptian clothing and temples and artwork in order to help make the entire layout inspired by ancient Egypt. It's really much more fitting in with a world I made up. The world is called Therius and the story is the cartouche of stars. Now for this next picture, the whole idea was to have a dinosaur bird, so a winged flying or at least gliding dromaeosaurid. As you saw, I traced over a photograph. The photograph is from a page in my tone tan sketchbook of a gouache painting I did that I thought would work really good for the line art for the coloring book. So once again, I took a photo and made a line art by tracing over. I made designs in the background that also look like four wing raptors. Everything about it, the shapes, the theme of the background also fits. The rest of the video is dedicated to the cover art. I'm showing the time lapse that I did in Procreate of adding the background to this older artwork. The artwork is of a winged base form variant of my main character Velasa. Velasa is my alter ego, a white furred Selnos Elinus, which is a cat person, who's an immortal, an immortal being of great power called Neronis. I'm not interested in any negative feedback on Velasa because she's incredibly important to me. I also won't take any hate towards furries or anthro art. I love anthro art and there's actually quite a bit in the coloring book. So I hope that you like that kind of thing if you want to hang out here or purchase the coloring book. The other thing to remember is that Velasa's base form doesn't normally have wings, but she's also the all form and can take any form she wants. So a winged variant I drew actually several years ago that I still love was used as the base here. I imported the line art and added a thicker line behind it and as you saw I worked on the background. Here I printed it out onto a standard cheap printer paper. That's right, I used cheap printer paper. I'm sick of so many covers of things being done digitally when the thing itself is supposed to be a coloring book. So I don't have access to what it will be like printed out on the Amazon paper, but I assume it's not better than the printer paper I can have at home. But using my various colored pencils and Copic markers, I'm able to do the best job I can coloring in the cover art. The cover art I'm going to feature will possibly be slightly touched up digitally, but as you can see, it actually looks really good in real life. You'll see the final artwork that I now have framed on my wall. I use the Copic markers to put an underneath layer. In some cases, I only use the Copic markers, which blend just fine on regular printer paper in my opinion. I also overlay, once it's fully dry, with colored pencils. Those beautiful earth tone pencils are Derwent drawing pencils. I'm also using Prismacolors, Polychromos, and Brute Funners. I'm working wet into wet with the alcohol-based markers here in order to get a nice gradient blend. I carefully worked out the perfect color palette that I really liked. I ended up going through a lot of trouble to pick the cover art, but decided Winged Velasa was perfect for many reasons, including the fact that I felt I could put words on top of it to show part of it black and white and part of it cover in color on the cover, rather, and that it represented me and the coloring book best. The fact that she's anthro with wings, the fact that it has the Art Nouveau background, the fact that I'm coloring it in a legitimate traditional way that you can color your own coloring book in in order to be the change I wish to see in the world, and the fact that it represents who I am as a person as Velasa is, as I said, my Aranith better self that I've made up since I was seven years old. And so I really like the contrast between pale pastel opalescent gold tones, blue, turquoisey blue, turquoise tones, and 
very earthy orangey browns. And so I also added very dark ultramarine royal blue as you can see here in touches. And I really am very happy with the final look of it. This took me quite a while. This video has been sped up and edited a lot, but it really was really fun to work on and I really enjoy the overall look. One of the other factors I considered was, does it look good really small? Can I make it look good really small zoomed out? If someone was seeing an image of this while looking at Amazon on their phone screen or while looking at the YouTube video thumbnail on their phone screen, would it still look good small? And I've zoomed out on a photograph of it and yes, it really does look good, which is really nice. And it looks good much larger. As I said, I hung it up, I put it in a frame and I hung it up on my wall. Now I know that Copic markers are not light fast, but honestly, if you put them in a room without any direct sunlight framed behind glass, they will actually still keep their color for quite some time. And if it eventually fades, I can always print out and color in another one. I also have the video recorded, so I can totally tell exactly how I colored it to do it again. I made sure to choose for the background color some brown colors that are ever so slightly yellowish, tan colors that faded well together. The other reason I chose these two colors for the base coat here after some testing on a separate sheet, I did a lot of testing on a separate sheet before coloring the final one. As you can see, I just took some photos there to speed things up, is because I had Copic refills from many years ago of those two colors, so I wouldn't feel like I'm going to waste all the ink. As you can see, I'm going over with four Derwent drawing pencils in order to get a beautiful blend. Rather than showing you the entire process, I speed it up with these photographs to show the final process. And here's a final look at the original traditional art version of the cover. The kind of thing you can do with your coloring book. Once again, that's all for this video. If you like my videos, please remember to like, subscribe, and turn on that notification bell to all notifications so you will know when a new video comes up. I aim for new videos every Wednesday, but sometimes life happens and things are delayed. I hope that you enjoyed this video and will see you with another one very soon.